What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite, and tonight we're gonna be talking about the first season one update for Modern Warfare 3, an all-new weapon that just dropped, plus two free camos. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and also as a reminder, we got plenty of brand new coverage going up over on adetonated.com, expanding on all the content you're seeing here on the channel, just in the form of articles on the website and plenty of tweets every single hour on Detonated's Twitter. Now, as of today, which is Wednesday, it is an exact week before the launch of season one for MW3. Now, typically a good week before the start of the season. We end up getting a full roadmap reveal, a blog post detailing all the brand new content, and we didn't get that today. Now, what we have seen a couple of times during Modern Warfare 2 cycle is that the brand new season gets revealed Thursday, a good six days before the launch of the new content, but unless there's a new schedule they have going for MW3, we should be getting marketing for Season 1 no later than tomorrow. But do keep in mind, what we saw during Modern Warfare 2 is that some of the reloaded updates got marketed on Mondays, two days before the start of that content. I'm not saying they're going to do that for Modern Warfare 3 Season 1, but I wouldn't rule it out of the question completely. Now, tomorrow, though, we are for sure going to be getting shipment added into the 6v6 rotation, so we're going to be seeing the Rust Mint playlist, which is obviously a hybrid of Rust and Shipment, but yeah, that does mean that the Modern Warfare 2 shipment map is being carried forward into Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. That for sure is releasing according to the in-game playlist timer, so I'll be live for that, and then if they want to go ahead and market Season 1, I'll also be breaking all that down live on stream for you guys. Now, a huge kickstart to Season 1 is the end of the four weekly challenges, so they now allow you to earn both an animated camo called Golden River and even the new Tech Eradicator LMG. Now, I don't believe there's going to be a week five for weekly challenges. I think what they might do is reset it back maybe to week one or have it to where every time a season starts, depending on how long the season is going to be, they have weekly challenges that last throughout the entire duration of that season. I think right now they perfectly timed it to where there were a good, what, four weeks in between launch and season one, giving everybody enough time to go ahead and earn all of these rewards. With that, though, you can see the Tech Eradicator LMG is one of the rewards for doing at least five of the week four challenges. And then by having done at least five weekly challenges throughout all four weeks, you can no longer do weeks one through three though. You get your hands on the Golden River animated camo. I made a mistake in a previous video where I thought that the leaked tech Evolve Ray LMG was also the tech eradicator. I just thought that one was a code name that was data mine and one was the name of it in game. I'm not a gun expert by any means. I know about a decent amount of weaponry, but there are some that I just never heard of before. So I appreciate you gun experts in the comments who are respectful and correct me whenever I do make a mistake with some weapon names like this, but the Tech Eradicator, from my understanding, is more like the Hammer from Black Ops 2, so a fan favorite that we haven't seen in quite some time, at least on the Treyarch end, but it's cool that since this game takes place close to the events of Black Ops 2, this LMG did make its way back in. This is, of course, separate, again, from the Tech Evolve Rate leaked LMG that apparently is coming in Season 1. Now, you've been seeing gameplay in the background of this brand new weapon, which, in my opinion, is a little too good. They're probably going to nerf it a tad bit with the start of Season 1, and you also have the Golden River animated camo on the weapon itself. Let me know how you're feeling about this brand new addition to the game down below in the comments. I think it's crazy that just within the launch window and the preseason window of Modern Warfare 3, we've gotten upwards of like four free camos and three different events and a bunch of other opportunities that we've never seen before during this period of a Call of Duty life cycle. But when it comes to our week four multiplayer challenges here, it says get 20 operator kills with a recommended weapon, get five operator double kills with the Jack Heretic Carbine Kit equipped to the MTZ 762 get 15 operator point blank kills with the Jack Raven kit equipped to the MCW or get three operator fury kills with a recommended weapon. You can also get 15 operator headshots with the Jack Raven kit equipped to the MCW or you can use the Akimbo brace stocks equipped to the WSP swarm and get some kills that way. And there's also the option to then again use the yellow jacket Akimbo brace stocks equipped to the WSP swarm and get some other kills there as you can see. But then moving on to the zombie side again you could do five total challenges whether it's three in MP, two in zombie or vice versa, you can mix and match. For zombies, as you can see, get 150 kills with a rare blue rarity recommended weapon. Get 150 kills with the Jack Heretic Carbine Kit equipped with the Pack-a-Punch MTZ 762. Get 150 kills with the Jack Raven Kit equipped on the MCW while Jug is active. Kill a Warlord with a recommended weapon. Then get 100 critical kills with the Jack Raven Kit equipped on the MCW. Or get 100 kills with the Yellow Jacket Akimbo Brace Stocks equipped on the WSP Swarm. And lastly, there's another challenge requiring you to use the Yellow Jacket Akimo Brace Stocks equipped on the WSP SMG. So while that concludes the four weeks of challenges here within Modern Warfare 3, I do think it was a pretty cool system. I would say it's cool to look forward to being able to unlock, let's say, an animated camo or being able to unlock, let's say, a new DLC weapon or a new aftermarket parts by having gone ahead and having completed, let's say, that week's worth of challenges or multiple weeks worth of challenges. Now, I like the fact that week's four challenges do require you to use items that you've unlocked over the last three 
three weeks of doing some of the other challenges in game. So I like there was some fluidity and some consistency with exactly how they wanted you to play the game. Now today, by mistake, the Call of Duty Brazil account ended up going ahead and posting the key art for season one. And shortly after this, the official Call of Duty account then posted it, but everybody had about an hour or so to kind of dive deep into this image and break down some of the secrets that you can see if you pay enough attention. So first off, we have confirmation from this key art that yes, Nolan is going to be the season one operator, probably the face of the roadmap and will likely be the main character of the season. If he's going to be the main character, let's say in the post-launch cinematic cutscene, maybe that ties into what we were talking about yesterday with Valeria, which is the fact that since Nolan is currently locked up, maybe she breaks him out or something happens where they form an alliance considering that Valeria is working with Makarov. Something to bring up real quickly, but apparently he's holding the Tac Evolve Ray light machine gun, one of the rumored weapons that we've been talking about for a while. Nolan's holding it, so there's more confirmation that it'll probably be featured in the battle pass alongside his operator. We're also somebody else holding what looks like the Ram 7, aka the Tavor X95. That's the real life name. That's a weapon that we also saw in Modern Warfare 2019. It's also going to make its way back. We can all see what looks like a brand new skin for Ghost, and then there's an old skin being used there for Farah, so it's unclear if she'll get any new skins, either in the Battle Pass or through any bundles throughout Season 1. People also pointed out there's a helicopter you can spot towards the top right. I don't believe it's a new type of helicopter for Urzikstan, but it could be, right? Keep in mind, they're probably going to introduce us to brand new vehicles we haven't seen before in the brand new Warzone map, and then later on in 2024 as well. But it's come to my attention, according to the usual Twitter leakers and whatnot, that the ARX Assault Rifle and the HRM-9 SMG are going to be coming at mid-season. So apparently, if you look at some of the leaked weapon charms that were visible at COD Next, those are weapons that are going to be coming during the mid-season of MW3 Season 1, not the beginning of the season. So if anything, those will be featured in, let's say, a classified Battle Pass sector, or through, let's say, weekly challenges, the armory system, or just a base challenge that gets added into the game during Reloaded, and the other weapons that are currently rumored, like you can see on screen, are probably going to all be featured in the Battle Pass or other means during the launch window of Season 1. Now, to everybody's surprise today, a new challenge event also went live inside of Modern Warfare 3 today, and it's not like the previous two. So we have about a day or so left to go ahead and finish the Makarov camo event for those out there that want to get their hands on some Kony themed cosmetics and of course a Makarov themed camo. You can still do that, but alongside that, which is of course a XP based event similar to the True Legends Endowment one from a couple of weeks ago, there is a new 141 challenge event, which I really didn't expect to see and does actually feature legitimate challenges for both multiplayer and zombies. And by doing the challenge, you can get your hands on a calling card, some XP tokens, a sticker emblem, and lastly, a free universal camo, which is also blue. That's my color here. So taking a look at what the challenges are for both MP and zombies, we first up have the get 141 kills to get your hands on a 141 training week emblem. But in zombies, you can get 141 critical kills on any of the zombies that you see. There's also a challenge to take down six aerial kill streaks or to destroy four vehicles inside of zombies. I would say zombies probably where that's easier to do. We then have get 50 kills shortly after reloading with speed cola active. And that's not that bad to do in zombies if you already have the perk, but over in multiplayer, it's to get 10 kills just after reloading, so not that bad at all. But then the next one, get 15 mercenary critical kills, requiring you to go and find some of the mercenary AI at some of the camps or the strongholds, even the fortress, but in multiplayer, it just requires you to go ahead and get one execution in any match that you can, so I think that's easiest to do on some of the smaller maps, such as Rust 24-7, which is still a currently available playlist. Next up, the final challenge here is to get 50 kills with a pack-a-punched melee weapon. And if you don't want to do that, you could just get five kills with a melee weapon using covert sneakers inside of MW3 multiplayer. Depending on which mode you play the most, you're probably going to determine which one's easier to do and which one can save you the most time. If you're speedrunning some of these challenges, then you'll notice that two or three of them are probably fastest to do in zombies if you have enough loot in your stash. But some of the other ones can be done almost passively or by mistake while playing regular MP. Now, the usual leakers did go ahead and post a preview of what appears to be upcoming monster rewards as a part of the Modern Warfare 3 promotion. If you look at the monster website, there are a number of unannounced rewards rewards that are being labeled as in-season content, and considering when the promotion does end, which is early next year, it looks like there's probably going to be some Season 1 rewards that they're going to end up revealing very, very soon. The leakers are speculating that by December the 6th, they'll end up revealing at least one of the new rewards, which apparently is a full beast skin that you can get by going ahead and redeeming six different cans, or providing proof of six different purchases of a monster can, right? You'll apparently get that, and then for redeeming five monster cans, or having five receipts, you can get your hands on a large decal. I'm sure those will make a lot more sense relatively soon when they announce this, but as of right now, there's a total of like four different monster skins you can get as a part of this event. There's that yellow one that leaked out a little while back that still hasn't been announced to my understanding, and then there's this new full beast one, which is probably going to be the final reward as a part of this ongoing promotion. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on what looks like the first
first season one update here from Modern Warfare 3. We have a brand new weapon. We got multiple camos, a new challenge event, and some good prep here for the beginning of season one, which is December the 6th. We're expecting a lot of marketing as of, I guess, the end of this week. And on top of that, too, we should be getting some more patch notes following the upcoming playlist update, which will provide us with shipment starting tomorrow. I really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everybody. Thank you.